Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, what we're going to be doing is formally proving that the for that the internal forces within each simple truss must be parallel to the members themselves. So to show you what I mean, let's go to this animation I developed for a previous video. We know for method of sections that the free body diagram shows that the external forces that pop out must be parallel to the members themselves. But why is this? I mean, maybe you've asked yourself this question before. Why is it that these forces must be parallel or axial forces? Why don't they have components which can be perpendicular? For example, why can't there be a red force acting downwards at this particular point, right? I, I hope you ask yourselves these questions. They shouldn't be problems you shy away from. These are really important questions. Um, you shouldn't just accept them on face value. So in this particular video, I'm going to be formally proving that these forces must be axial. They must be parallel to these members based on three crucial assumptions. And those three assumptions are, and let me just choose white, these three assumptions are one, we're going to assume that each joint in this truss is a pin joint. This is crucial, right? And I'm going to be showing you why in, in, in a second, but I'm just going to mention the assumptions for now. The second assumption we're going to be making is assume that each pin joint has no friction. So that means there's not going to be an external moment due to the friction of the pin joints. They're well lubricated. Each of these joints, say the joint here at point A, the joint here at point B, the joint here at point C, for example, are well lubricated. So there's not going to be any, any friction there. We're also going to be assuming, and this is arguably the biggest assumption we're going to be making, we're going to be assuming that the mass of the truss is zero. That basically means the mass of the truss is negligible compared to the external force being applied to it. Right? With these three assumptions, we can prove that the internal forces within each of these members is going to be purely in the axial direction. All right, so let's get involved in a free body diagram. Okay, so in order to do that, let's label a few points. I'll call this point A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, before we get involved in a free body diagram, I really want to generalize this solution. So don't pay too much attention to the specifics here. Don't pay too much attention to 20 kilonewtons or any of these particular forces. I'm going to be generalizing it. And to do that, I'm going to be focusing on just this member just here, BC. So let me draw that. This will be member BC just here, right? This will be B and this will be C. Okay, now let's draw our free body diagram. We know from our first assumption that these must be pin supports, which means that there's going to be forces acting on them in both the horizontal and vertical direction. Fortunately for me, I haven't defined what I meant by horizontal and vertical yet. So I'm going to be choosing horizontal to be positively that way and why to be positively this way you'll i think you might see why i've done it this way sooner or later it's just for simplicity's sake so i'm going to be introducing arbitrary forces here i'm going to call this force here t and i'm going to call this force here v just here okay now um, now, I should mention that because we're assuming that each joint has no friction, we are not going to be dealing with external moments due to the friction of the pin support. We're not going to be dealing with something like that, right? And we're not going to be dealing with it at this point either because both pins have negligible friction. Likewise, due to our third assumption, the mass of the truss is zero, which means the mass of each member must be equal to zero, meaning that we're not going to be dealing with an external force, mg, acting through the center of the mass here. We're not dealing with that because m is, a, is approximately zero, right? So that's not going to be in there. Now, we know there are two conditions that must be satisfied, satisfied for equilibrium. We know one of them is the sum of forces acting on each member must be equal to zero. In fact, any part of the truss must be equal to zero, right? Now, without actually going through the laborious process of, of, of um, analyzing this formula, we can show that this must be T and this must be V just here. I'm skipping a few steps, but that's after you apply this particular formula, which I think we're all familiar with. Okay, another condition for equilibrium is that the sum of torques acting on any point of our free body diagram must be equal to zero as well. 
Okay, so now let's now that we've already applied this formula to get these two forces just here, let's actually apply this formula just here. I'm going to be doing the sum of torques around point C must be equal to zero. Well, first let's get our, let's get our convention right. We know that due to our x and y axes, counterclockwise is positive by convention using right hand rule. So let's do the sum of torques around point C. Well, the torque due to this force is zero. The torque due to this force is zero. The torque due to this force is zero. That's because this force runs directly through our center of rotation just here, point C, which means we've only got one torque due to this force, V. And that, then that torque is going to be V. Let me draw it in blue, actually. It's going to be V times by the length of from B to C, which I'll just denote as L, the length of our bar. It's going to be this distance just here. It's going to be V times by L, and that's got to be equal to the right-hand side of our equation, which is zero. Now, this is where the main part of our proof comes in. Notice that L, notice that L is a constant. It's, 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 the, 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 this bar is finitely sized. The length of this bar is not going to change, ideally. So L will remain constant, and L is definitely not zero. Okay? So which means that we must logically conclude that V must be equal to zero. That we're forced to accept this. If L can't be equal to zero, that means V must be equal to zero. Meaning, and this is the crucial part of the proof, that these must vanish. Okay? That means that's gone as well. Okay, now, so far I've proven that if you have a, a regular bar just here, that the forces must be axial. But we haven't proven that every point internally must be um, having an internal axial force as well. So let's prove that. Let's prove that by making an arbitrary cut along this bar just here. And let's draw our free body diagram again. So this is our free body diagram. This is where we made our cut just here. Right? This is point B. This is point B just here. We know there's an external force just here, T, but no external force here along in this direction, right? Now we can apply the sum of forces is going to be equal to zero using the same convention we've used here to show that there must be an internal reaction force, T, in this direction. Now let's double check that this satisfies the sum of torques around B is going to be equal to zero. I could have chosen any point, but I'm choosing B. Well, let's see. The sum of torques due to this is zero. Correct so far. And the sum of torques due to this point is going to be equal to zero. That's because this torque, sorry, this force does no, um, produces no moment. So zero plus zero is equal to zero. Fantastic. Brilliant. So this is a formal proof describing why the internal forces within every simple truss must be purely in the axial direction, assuming that these assumptions are true. I hope that makes sense, guys, um, and I'll catch you in the next video.